This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRE Secrets, I'm going to discuss patellar luxation in dogs and how you can treat it at home. Hi you guys, welcome again back to my channel. In this edition, I'm going to discuss a condition called patellar luxation or kneecap luxation. It's a very common condition that, that happens with small breed dogs. So our guest dog today is Choco. Unfortunately, he's not especially amenable to me picking him up and showing you his knee, but he's great for us to use as the model dog and discuss what he's got. So in, in this knee luxation or patellar luxation, for most of the dogs, it's, it luxates or dislocates into the inside, the medial part of the knee. So that's this inside portion. So for him, don't him biting me. Good boy. If we're looking at, there's the outside of his knee. That's sort of the inside. So if your dogs to come into a vet clinic, that's the first thing they'll do. They flex, extend that knee. They grab the kneecap, sort of there the patella, feel how it's located, and they'll often you just feel it sort of clicking out. So as I said earlier, there's it grades from grade one to grade four. Grade one means you can manually push it out when you, generally when you're flexing or extending the knee. And it's increasing as grading. So in most dogs, it's somewhere between grade one to grade two. And for a small number, a portion of these small breeds can be grade three to grade four. Grade three is where most of the time, <clears throat> it's very easy to push it out, but you can actually push it back into the groove. Grade four means where it's always it's always sitting out luxated. You can no longer push it back into the groove. So what would you see or expect to see if your dog had patellar luxation? So with somebody like Choco, typically it was mild, like grade one, grade two. All you're gonna see is your dog is sort of intermittently hopping. Choco might have it mildly. I've seen him slightly hop on one of his left legs. We can just watch him walk around and see if he can see anything. So what should you do if you suspect your dog has this patellar luxation? Well, the first thing, obviously, go ahead and you can get him examined and determine if that's what he has in two the grades, in grade one to grade four. A small breed dog such as Chaco, who then has a sort of intermittent lameness, you may not do, need to do anything at all because most of these guys can live completely fine, you know, 15 to 20 years without, without, without having any type of intervention, surgery or anything major at all. You know, they, they intermittently hop around, it doesn't really affect them in any big way in terms of mobility. They might get some mild arthritis, which you can treat via supplements, but you may not necessarily need to do anything at all. So the next thing, if your dog is quite severely affected in terms of grade three, grade, grade four, where he's lame most of the time, you've gone to a vet, they've you know done an exam, determined that, then you could consider some type of surgery. Um, there's three different types of veterinary surgeries. One is where they just sort of strengthen the, the heart of the tissue or the ligaments adjacent to the knee to stop it from sort of popping um, in and out. They might actually make the groove a lot bigger, which I've done surgery-wise. You actually take a section of bone under the tibia to make the, the groove bigger, or they might actually cut the lower part of the bone off the tibia and they move it over um, to try to anchor that kneecap to stop it from sliding in and out. Okay, another option, and something you should consider, you probably haven't heard from your veterinarian, is physiotherapy. And what you're looking at doing is strengthening your dog's quadricep muscles. So if they're stronger, then they're gonna grip more tightly onto that kneecap or that patella, and it's less likely to luxate or slide in and out. And a couple of simple things to think about. The first thing, just having your dog sit, repeatedly sit, you know, stand and sit. Do that 10 times twice a day. Chuckle, come here. Chuckle, sit. Chuckle, come here. Go boy. Come here. Go boy. Come here. Chuckle. I sit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sort of, you kind of get the get the picture. You want him to sit, stand, sit, stand about ten times a day. The next other thing, which is really good at strengthening their quad muscles, the other simple thing is having your dog do stairs. You know, up and down a flight of stairs. You know, repeating that at least twice a day. So we can just watch Choco do. I'm doing the stairs. Okay, Choco. Come on. Come on. So just those two simple exercises can go a long way in building your dog's quad muscles up. 
making it less likely for that kneecap to slide in and out, potentially less likely for you um, having the knee for surgery. The third thing that you should look at doing is some form of supplement, specifically for arthritis and to help increase the amount of cartilage. Because we know what's happening in patellar luxation with the kneecap sliding in and out. That knee joint is not working properly. You're having cartilage, rubber cartilage, leading to bone on bone and secondary arthritis. So with someone like Choco, for the, the easiest thing would be to do a combination of glucosamine, chondroitin, NSM. And in those, you're looking at doses of the glucosamine, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily, the chondroitin, 50 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily, and the NSM of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. All those are found in my supplement, Ultimate Canine. Um, so for something like little Choco, he'd be getting about a quarter of a scoop uh, once daily. The next herb, which I've increasingly been using more and more often, um, which is proving to be especially helpful for some, of the, for some of these inflammatory conditions, specifically arthritic ones involving the knee, is curcumin. It's a really good one if you're dealing with more advanced arthritis and you're looking at another alternative to one of these non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Because often what happens in you know, advanced patellar luxation, you really are then getting secondary advanced arthritis. But fortunately for the small breeze, such as like little Choco, that's Choco's buddy Wilson there, you can also look at then using something like curcumin, especially curcumin in, com in combination with Boswellia, has proven to be almost as effective as some of these non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, you know, such as Medicam or such as Remedil. So a curcumin dose, you're looking at 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily of the 95% curcuminoids. And for Boswellia, um, we're looking at about half of that, 50 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Okay, the last couple things I want to show you are sort of hands-on physical therapy. I'm not doing Choco because I'm pretty confident he's going to chew on me, and that's not good for YouTube. So, a couple things you can look at doing. One, just some passive range of motion exercises. And what, likewise, what you're trying to do is just flex and extend his knee. We're trying to and secondary build up some of those muscles. Because we know what's happened, you know, he's got a defect where the soft tissue has gotten weakened and it's allowing that, the groove is too small, it's allowing the kneecap to pop out. It's a real simple thing, you can just be doing it twice a day. Spart your dog's knees, I'm doing here with, with Wilson's, his right knee. With my left hand, grabbing his hawk, just above his ankle here. With my right hand, I'm just flexing and extending it. Doing that twice a day. Because we're going through the range of motion, we're producing some joint fluid, and having him have that feel of extending and flexing the knee while also keeping that kneecap in place. So the last one I want to discuss is using acupressure. So there's two or three pretty simple points to use. One is called the BL60, the KI3 point. So that, I've got it on Wilson's hawk here. So this is kind of, this is his foot. It's kind of, this is sort of would be equivalent of his ankle. And just above his ankle is called his tarsus or his hawk. And in this sort of loose tissue of webbing, so if you see this big, thick, ropey tendon here, that's his Achilles tendon or his gastroc. So in, in between the tendon and the base of the bone, the tibia, is the BL60 point. So I've got my thumb in there. On the inside of that webbing, on the inside of that soft tissue in between the Achilles tendon, my hand and fingers on the KI3 point. So I'm gonna hold those two together with moderate pressure Hold those to, for 30 to 60 seconds, and I would do that twice daily. And it's something you want to do for a week and see if it's going to benefit your dog or not. The other point, which is even easier to do, is just putting your palm right over top of your dog's knee. And you can do that in conjunction while you're holding the other two acupressure points, the BL60 KA3 point. Similar, holding that for 30 to 60 seconds, doing that twice a day. Go ahead, do that for a week, and see if it's going to be beneficial or helping your dog or not. Uh, so thank you guys once again for watching this video on patellar relaxation. Thanks Wilson, who's all happy and wet and muddy. And thank Choco for being part of the video and not biting me. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above. That can subscribe to my channel. You can go ahead and click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Come here.
Oh. <laughs> 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 Ain't cut. <laughs>